Okay, so it's got this. Um, obviously, you guys are aware that Andrew Schultz from Flagrant Two and also Brilliant Idiots fame has got a pretty decent special out now at the moment called Andrew Schultz Saves America. Right? Yeah, just, I've watched two episodes of it so far. I'm really enjoying it. Um, he's one of my favorites. I think in the whole stand-up comedy podcast world, I think he's really funny. I know he's not for some. You know, some people. He's, he's he has a certain. Um, he, yeah, he has a certain appeal, right? I know some people can kind of look at him and he can kind of be a bit annoying. And I have to be honest too, in the beginning, when he first started on Brilliant Idiots and he had that sort of weird tiff with Charlemagne, he didn't he rubbed me up the wrong way. But I think he was going through a lot of stuff personally outside the podcast that he was sort of having to deal with. You know, I'm sure his career wasn't where he wanted to be either. The moment he started to gain a bit of success and his career started to get a bit of wings, he started to come, you know, become his own sort of like media empire mogul type of dude. Um, his entire personality and how you approach chased and now no he how he came across on podcast definitely improved um over the last few years and i've definitely been a fan of the stuff he's been putting out there and um, especially the flagrant two podcast right i love how they sort of uh, talk about such a broad range of topics in a really comedic way big big fan so of course he dropped the you know his comedy special um that he put together with netflix um and short saves america did it of course in a very interesting way it's less of a comedy special and more so of his sort of interpretation of those sort of like news daily show things that they do in america which are pretty you know uh, except for the exception of a couple of sketches are on that on the most funny things in the world and he basically proved the fact that here yeah, if you get funny people telling funny jokes um about serious topics it can, can kind of like ease the seriousness and sort of add a bit of light to very dark topics so it seems like um off the back of the success of such a thing with netflix his ex-girlfriend called sarah phillips decided to come out and essentially um allude to the fact that he might be abusive right and it's thrown up some interesting questions as to how women i guess speak about such issues in public especially when they're dealing with somebody who has notoriety who's going through their pressure and blah 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 and also how the person that's been accused of it aka andrew schultz um approaches the subject too because from the time of me recording it so far he hasn't addressed it one bit he hasn't given it any light he hasn't even mentioned it in one even in a passing phrase or joke he's completely ignored it and for the most part it seems to be working it doesn't seem to be gathering any steam even though again he's under the netflix banner which does add a bit of scrutiny and unwanted attention from some of the blue check mark com comedic journalists that exist out there but he, he seems to have kind of well, for lack of a better term got away with it and it's interesting to see considering what everyone else is going through uh, you know at, you know in the comedy space so this is a screenshot here it's from it's sarah phillips and it says the following so she kind of wrote this statement regarding andrew schultz and what he's doing so it said the following here i've been thinking a lot of whether or not to speak on this but i'm hoping that if i do now i can hopefully never speak on it again and we can leave it in the confines of a dumpster fire year we've all had I want to ask that those who have those who continue to harass me and my loved ones tag me in posts, send me disgusting messages regarding an ex boyfriend of mine. Please, please stop. This has gone a consistent. This has gone on consistently from the end of that relationship nearly six years ago and continues to now. So she essentially is insinuating that fans of Flagrant Two, fans of Andrew Schultz, have been harassing her from the time that they broke up to now. Um, I guess rubbing his success in her face, trolling her, whatever they may do now there's no evidence of this usually when people are going through such a thing they would take screenshots and upload them and stuff but you know i'm sure she's probably having to deal with whatever she's dealing with when it comes to stuff so you don't maybe want to relive that trauma but it does seem a little bit fishy that she would suggest that she would kind of insinuate this is a thing but not provide any evidence of it again doesn't have to explain yourself in that way but it just seems a bit odd that would say regardless right but i can i can picture this thing happening i can picture fans of somebody because you know online fans are fanatical right they're super weird um they're super um um what was that called is it territorial not territorial whatever that thing was club club v club right even when somebody's wrong they still can kind of ride for their guy or girl to a very nauseating level it's not really cool but hey continues here she said in the last few days i've been um, inundated with unwanted comments messages and questions presumably related to the decision made by netflix to release show saves america i have not and will not watch it but i have seen the backlash it has received not really a lot of backlash to be fair a couple of journalists have some have some choice words to say about it have 
they, they've of course done the, le- the lazy standard thing they always do when somebody sort of calls out people on the left they sort of you know essentially labeled him as a right-wing grifter um but for the most part I've seen some people maybe comment on his maybe off-color jokes, but again, he's a comedian. Should be allowed to say what he wants to say as long as it's funny. But I've not really seen that much backlash, which might be the reason why she decided to come out of the story in the first place, right? It continues. Uh, for me, even opening Netflix on my TV in my home has been completely triggering. To have see to have to see the face of somebody who abused me for years is something that I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. And it's funny that that sounds exactly like the thing that the girl said that accused Chris D'Elia, right? When the first taxations came through she was essentially at home bored scanning through netflix and it happened to stumble upon you watch the second season and seeing chris i think in the first i think he's in the second episode and it's like what that's the guy that did x y and z to me right and so it triggered and she went on a whole twitter tirade and then that opened a floodgate so loads of other girls stepping up and saying yeah he did that he did this he did this to me so it's just funny that I guess it's funny to observe from the outside in the amount of people that are getting cancelled due to the victims or the alleged victims just being at home and sort of kind of having time to think about the things that they've sort of been through in the last few years, um, ruminating on issues, good or bad, and then deciding, you know what, this is the time I take a stand. This is the time I speak up for themselves. So if ever there was a time to get cancelled, this is, again, like I said previously in other shows, this is possibly the worst time to get cancelled because everyone's got time everyone's got time everyone's bored everyone is their own little investigative journalist and everyone kind of wants to have a reason to live and there's no better reason to live than inserting yourself other people's drama in it it's absolutely maddening it continues here it says i'm aware that i am that i owe no one an explanation and the people close to me have known the private details of the relationship for years but i don't know what else uh, will make people think twice next time before taking time out of their day to harass me about it which is again she keeps mentioning it so i'm gonna say she's probably leaning on the truth of it um you you'd, you're a complete weirdo if you're messaging ex-girlfriends of people that you follow on podcasts and harassing them i don't know what kind of guy or girl does that and thinks that's funny it isn't um even if they had some sort of that's the issue with this stuff right because if you have a partner if you if you have a public podcast and you bring on your partner on the podcast and you have this sort of like bantery jovial uh adolescent take the mickey out of each other on the show um relationship it sort of inadvert- inadvertently opens up the floodgates for strangers who don't know you to also jump in and start insulting you right it, which is obviously not funny and not cool because you don't know these people so you have to be very careful about how you speak about your partner i think in public you have to kind of treat it with kid gloves or make sure that you let people know that hey i'm not going to stand for x y and z or just keep it private um i think that's where he gets a bit murky but even if that's the case you you know it's six years on you have to if if he moved on fans have to move on as well i think that's utterly utterly odd it continues here for years i was manipulated controlled and abused by him the verbal abuse was constant i was isolated from my friends if i wore makeup that he thought was too much he'd wipe it off my face in public which is uh, <laughs> Sometimes you hear some things, right? And it's always, the, it's kind of like the first time you've heard it. You're like, what? And I heard that really the first time I was like, Dude, are there men out there that exist who get, what? Um, I want to say triggered, who get, um, who feel inadequate when their girlfriends look attractive when they go out together. Like, isn't that bizarre? Like, wouldn't the whole reason why you get with somebody that is overtly attractive is the fact that you are attracted by their looks in the first place? And of course, you got to know them as a person, blah, blah, blah. But you like the fact that you're with this really hot girl and she's really into you. And she likes the fact that she's really into this, what she thinks is a hot guy and she you're really into her, right? It's a kind of mutual uh, attraction, right? That sort of just works and it is what it is. But I always, I, also, I always sort of assume people that were dating really, really attractive people like you know cl- classic tens you knew that person was a 10 and you kind of prided yourself on going into a room making every guy every guy's neck twist and snap but also being secure in the knowledge that even though their necks are twisting and they're making you know lewd remarks under their breaths you're the one taking her home you're the one that's living with her. You're the one that gets to spend the rest of your life with her, right? That would kind of give you a bit of pride. You don't necessarily care unless someone step over the mark. But the most part, you take some pride in the fact that you've got a really attractive girlfriend on your arm. Why would you be triggered and wanting to wipe up makeup? That's really, really odd. And as well, 
oddly specific for somebody that I would if you were if you're somebody that's sitting out there thinking oh she's making it up it's oddly specific thing to say in it about somebody um even if you did it once it's really odd like I've never heard of it in my entire life it's super super strange but again it maybe says a lot about his internal um struggles and all this sort of stuff who knows we don't know any of these people but just reading the the, the words on the screen that screams that screams abuse in it like that is if ever there was a if ever there was an example of a microaggression that would be it um it continues um he'd force me to change before leaving the house if he thought my outfit would get too much attention um once after uh, being sick for weeks without explanation i found out that he had been using my toothbrush to clean his bottom of his shoes to this day i can't make sense of that kind of sickness which is again another odd thing i've never heard um I guess it's sort of like a weird power play, like a dominance thing, or maybe it's just like a purely careless college room brat boy thing where the first thing you grab is a toothbrush, you just use that to clean someone's shoes. But I, I would assume you would know what your partner's toothbrush is and what is, you know, a spare thing or something that you use to kind of, you know, scrub uh, scrub around the taps of your bathroom or something. That's just an odd thing to do. Like, it's just, yeah, again, God almighty, man. Uh, Andrew, what are you doing, brother? He says, on another one, on another occasion, on a vacation in Aruba, his anger got so out of control that I had to hide from him in the hotel bathroom with the door locked. Soon after, I began having panic attacks almost every night. There are other things that happened during the relationship that I will probably never talk about in the rest of my life. Um, as happy, as healthy as I am, I feel in every fortune... And as happy and healthy as I feel in my very fortunate life now, seeing this person's face, hearing their voice, seeing their name is still very triggering. Maybe it always will be. I don't know. But I just ask that you please try to understand. This is not funny, Joe, to keep sending me things related to this person. Please stop. Please try to understand. Thank you. So, again, man, like, I'm just shocked that this is not gained any traction. Like, again, I don't want the guy to be cancelled. I don't want anyone to be cancelled. Just considering what's happened in general with other comedians and in public and normal life, um, either, it's, either the fact that he's not that famous and no one gives a shit, or it's the fact that she's been very vague about what actually happened because, you know, you could, in his defence, you could just say that just sounds like him being a crappy boyfriend. Right, and if that's the case, is it a crime to be a shit boyfriend? Probably not. Um, is it advent? Is it? Is it? Does it make you look good? Obviously, it doesn't. But it's not something that you should be cancelled for. It's not something you should probably lose your job for. But it does throw up some interesting um questions as to maybe how people like Crystal Lee or Brian Callen should have dealt with their accusations. Maybe if they kind of kept quiet and sort of stayed somewhat professional about the issue, and maybe tried to reconcile. Rec uh, rectify it you know especially in brian's case try to resolve it uh behind the scenes without doing this whole weird song and dance and show of um standing up against the mob that may have maybe lent to a far better um outcome or it's just maybe they were unlucky and they were the sacrificial lambs at the beginning of this whole ordeal and now a few years a few months on especially during a pandemic year especially within us being you know a whole 10 months maybe approaching a year living under restrictions no one really gives a shit and that is the unfortunate scary part of it if you're an actual victim that's been abused or you've gone through what this lady has actually gone through like you've now won you've now gained the courage to talk about your experience um and you've sort of uh, kind of lashed upon this opportunity with you know Andrew Schultz going through what he's going through um, with his press run for his new special on Netflix you sort of seize an opportunity to sort of shine the light on your trauma but effectively people are basically telling you like look we don't necessarily care what you're going through we have bigger problems to sort of address at the moment uh, which again can't be blamed but god damn it man what a scary place to live in isn't it where you can hold on to such pain for so long decide to finally air it out and in the public to say nah we're kind of over it but i don't know is this a cautionary tale for other comedians should they be maybe looking at this approach of andrew Schultz just you know deciding to be mum about it and not commenting on it whatsoever or is this one of those messy things that you just can't really judge fairly right it just sounds like a messy crappy relationship that they both went through maybe it was probably the first serious one let's say it was the first serious relationship they've both been in they were both clumsy in how they dealt with things um, people brought their own baggage with them in their relationship and tried to sort it out um, in real time living with somebody else going through whatever career strictly they were going through especially i can imagine for a man how weird it must be living with somebody that is far more successful than you in the entertainment 
industry because I'm sure she's a successful singer. So at that time, she might have been doing really, really well for herself. And he was still struggling as a comedic act. Like all these things can add to it and make it a bit messy. So it might not be as black and white as it's being made out to be. But it's just interesting from just a victim uh, point of view that it seems like no one has gave, has given a shit about her story whatsoever from the minute that it's been published. And it's been very surprising considering that I've seen a couple of blue check marks journalists on Twitter trying their best to sort of shine light on the fact that they think um, Andrew Schultz is like a right wing grifter or like a um, radicalized, uh, I don't know, conservative comedian, whatever they kind of brand these people as. So you would just assume that they would use the opportunity to kind of piggyback off the back of this and use it as, a, as another stick to kind of beam over the head with. But it hasn't worked. And I don't know why. I really don't know. Maybe the story is fluff. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? Do you think Andrew's guilty? Do you think this Sarah Phillips woman is opportunistic? Um, do you think the industry is hypocritical? Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to know your opinion.